everything was intense. I mean, we decided to make a 100% free, you know, CGI-free movie. So everything you see is real. So that, that really makes it for a different experience, right? So everybody was exposed to real things all the time. So just standing there and watching what we were doing was scary itself because right. it wasn't something that, oh, well, you see it in the cut or you see it in the editing. No, you were standing there even without seeing, you know, looking at the monitor. You will see, like, pretty disturbing stuff all the time. Right. The prosthetics and the rigs and everything uh, just kind of mind-blowingly <laughs> amazing. I love that Fede is trying to do everything here with prosthetics and with the rigs and not with CGI. It just makes it so much, I mean, for us, it makes it so much easier from an acting point of view when you're actually like chopping off an arm rather than just pretending with no blade and all that stuff. I mean, it's cool. And there's been blood everywhere and vomit everywhere. And it's, it's just, it adds so much, I think because it's not this CGI sort of blood splatter and you, you're like, oh, it's fake. It, it just gives it such a rawness on screen that's really cool to see. There's so many moments where I was like, holy crap, what <laughs> did I just do? My heart was beating so fast. <laughs> and that was one of the, that was that was a really crazy day. The thing I liked about Fede is he created this environment on set that was, no matter what we talked about before, let's try whatever you feel like right now. And that was sort of different for me, and I just listened to him, and I think through that, we found a lot of stuff in the moment. Um, it, it couldn't be too contrived. I think that being scary, I've said this before, but being scary and being funny is sort of the same thing to me. Like, I work on a comedy, and you can't really try to be funny, and you can't really try to be scary. It doesn't really work like that. Um, so I think we just knew, like, Fetty wrote this story, so he knows the story extremely well. And from all the rehearsal we had, like I feel like, and how many times, how much I worked on it, and how many times I read it, I feel like the story was really in me, and these characters were really in me. But when we got to set, there was a lot of freedom. Fede pitched the concept of an Evil Dead because he was a fan, and Sam was like, "Well, what would you do? How what would your approach be?" And he, he pitched his idea, and it all seemed very logical. And then Sam got. He contacted me and Rob Tapper and was like, should we take this seriously or not? And we were like, well, the people have been talking about the, getting another one of these movies. Let, let's give them one it, with better effects, better actors. Every actor in this movie is better than any of us combined in the first one. As far as just the ease and the comfort at which they are, are performers. Um, all the special effects are better. The Photography is better. It's just it was a chance to to not see the green garden hose that's spewing the blood. You know that's all we wanted to do was take the modern day ability and have a decent budget and and let people have it again. It grips you and it holds you and it doesn't let you go, which is the, the real key to a horror movie. They can't let you go. You can't feel like you can ever escape. And there is no escape. Characters in the movie try and escape. They can't escape. Nobody can escape. The audience can't even escape. So you're basically doomed if you come and see this movie if you're not ready for it. We don't see much su supernatural things in the movie in the way of, when I'm saying su supernatural, you don't see people floating or, you know, something that is too... Uh, you don't see magic elements, you know? You don't see anything that is too, too supernatural and obvious. That's why they're, they're struggling during the whole movie to process this, things are happening and they're, they, they don't know. They think it may be they're just mad or it's just some kind of crazy virus that is driving them crazy or they, yeah, w w they don't know. So I, I, I didn't want to show them any, uh, to the character, I didn't want to show a, a, any display of supernatural power too soon into the movie that would make them, it would kill the debate. They would go right away, okay, this is a supernatural curse. So that's why we're trying to hide all things and not showing them too much. And I think by that point, because we're already in third act and close to the end, it's one of the first things that David will witness that will tell him, okay, this is, I mean, this is supernatural, definitely something. I think that Olivia is probably the most skeptical to everything that's going on as, as far as the um, horror is concerned. I think she's, she's there for a specific purpose. And, um, uh, that's her, her main focus, and when things start to kind of go wrong, I think she just wants to, to put it out of her mind and, and remind everybody the reason they're there, and um, that kind of leads them into trouble. There's an encounter between Natalie and Mia in the cellar, and she gets bitten 
on the hand and, and this kind of infection starts to take over and she just starts freaking out and whatever it is, this kind of, she just needs to get, get rid of it, you know, like it's going up and up her arm. So she chops her arm off um, <laughs> and, and kind of feels free of, of that sort of takeover of her whole body from this evil force or whatever it is happening to her and she just chops it off. The supernatural in this is such a cool visual and it really keeps you going throughout the whole movie that there really is an antagonist. It's both of this book and this evil and it becomes us. We become the bad guys. It's, it's, uh, not a, it's such a cool story. I think that's why Evil Dead in the first place was such a good classic is because the good guys become the, the demons.